We're checking in with Monday Night Football sideline reporter Lisa Salters. Lisa, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with Alexis Perry and I today. Obviously, everyone here in Denver is really anxious for the 2020 season to get underway. But I want to know, what excites you the most about this Broncos-Titans matchup? Uh, well, because it's week one for us on the schedule. Um, you know, I always love coming to Denver. It, it's, it's a great city. I don't know how much I'll be able to go out in the city because of the way things are right now. But, um, you know, there's just so many great storylines about this. Drew Locke, his evolution, what... You know, how is he going to jump this year? What's he going to look like? Um, you know, having the keys to the car really for the first time. I, we were all looking forward to Bradley Chubb and, and Von Miller, of course, being on the field, seeing uh, what they were going to do together. Um, and now it looks like that's not going to happen. So that's disappointing. Um, but uh, many, many things uh, that we were looking forward to about the matchup on the Titan side as well. You know, Ryan Tannehill has a lot to prove this season. Jarrell Casey um, playing playing against his former team. That was that was going that's going to be exciting as well. So I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing these two quarterbacks for the first time uh, since we last saw them last year. Neither quarterback was the starter this time last season, right? So uh, you know where are they in their development uh, now that they are the you know they are the ones driving their respective machines and how much confidence they have, how much they've grown uh, in the off season that really wasn't an off season. Um, so I, I think I'm gonna be looking at mostly the quarterbacks, Drew Locke, Ryan Tannehill, to see where both of those guys are right now. What is the national perspective of Drew Locke heading into this 2020 season right now? I think uh, a lot of people don't know who Drew Locke is. Uh, because he really kind of took over in the, at the latter, in the latter half of, of last season when the Broncos really were kind of already out of it. And so there wasn't a lot of national uh, exposure to him. Um, so though he went four and one, right? Is that right? He went four and one in those last five games. You guys saw it, but the rest of the nation probably did it. Um, so everyone got to see what Ryan Tannehill did, how he shocked the Patriots, how he shocked the Ravens. Uh, how he had uh, his Titans up 10 on the uh, World Championship Chiefs. Um, but no one really knows a lot uh, outside of the Denver bubble, outside of people who, who cover the NFL for a living. No one really knows Drew Locke. And so I think that that's going to be exciting to introduce the world uh, to him. He's the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. And, um, you know, I, I remember when we met with him last preseason, uh, us being impressed by him, but also hearing that, you know, he's not ready yet. He said he wasn't ready yet. Coaches said he's not ready yet, but he didn't have to be ready. Now he has to be ready. And uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see where he is and if he is in fact ready. Whether Drew Locke is ready or not, we'll see Monday night, but he does have a ton of weapons at his disposal this season, you know, from veterans like Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, to rookies like Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler. This Broncos receiver room is loaded, Lisa. What is your perspective on some of Locke's weapons this season? Well, I think he's loaded. Um, I was just talking on our production meeting call uh, this after this morning. Uh, everybody is so excited about Judy, and they're like, "You've got, we've got to talk to this guy." And so that made me want, think, like, "All right, I got to start like really <laughs> like deep diving." into this guy and when I started looking into it and seeing that Emmanuel Sanders had reached out to him and that people were so impressed with his footwork. Um, I haven't talked to him yet, uh, but he's one of the guys that I'm looking forward to talking to in the next couple of days. Um, just to, you know, to find out so much is expected of him um, as a rookie and he's expected to come in and do great things. And, um, you know, as a, as a young, I, you remember how you are when you, well, you are, you guys are young, but like, I know how I felt when I was young and entering into the business. And when people gave you a big assignment, you, you, you really wanted to step up and, and, and rise up to that challenge. So, um, also Philip Lindsay, I'm looking forward to seeing how Philip Lindsay handled. And I've always loved talking to him. He's just so real undrafted, he had that great rookie pro bowl season just looking to see how he handles having Melvin Gordon, another great back with him, how that's going to work. Um, both guys have said all the right things, but how is that going to work? Uh, that's only going to be beneficial for the Broncos uh, to have such great talent in the backfield. But, you know, 
is, you know, are they going to be able to, to divide the rock that, that much? Philip Lindsay is a great back. So is Melvin Gordon. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see play out as well. If they are able to find that balance between Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay, what kind of challenges do you think this Broncos, you know, backfield poses for opposing defenses? Oh, well, it'll be, it'll be crazy because Philip Lindsay has already proven himself to be one of the best in the league, and and Melvin Gordon, I mean, he's just he's just another great talent. So regardless of who gets the number one designation and who's number two, and that might even change from week to week, uh, whenever you line up, you know that you have somebody who can break one in, in the backfield. And that for an opposing defense, um, that's just so difficult to know that the guy in the backfield could, you know, could wreck the game, could wreck the game for you guys. You could do everything well, and that guy could wiggle right through and just and wreck, wreck the game. Now, Lisa, you touched on it a little bit, but on the other side of the ball, obviously we all heard the news about Von Miller. Reports have said he could potentially be out for the season. Ultimately, how do you think that's going to affect this defense as a whole this year? Well, you know, I was listening to Lewis Riddick talk about it, and, you know, Lewis said what I think everyone knows is that it, it's a devastating loss for the Broncos defense. But he also said these are professionals, and these are guys who – you know, you hear the next man up mentality all the time. I think Lewis was asked in a, in a call I had earlier, what is, you know, what does Vic say, what does Vic Major say to his team? And he says, I think he tells them that we have depth for a reason. This is why we have so many players so that if something does happen to one of our starters, the next guy comes in and takes over. I think it's gonna add a lot more pressure on, and on Bradley Chubb to get himself ready to play. I don't know if he is ready uh, at full strength right now, but the pressure's on him now to pick up the slack the way that Vaughn did when Bradley was out last season. Um, so I was just crushed to get that to get that text yesterday because because Vaughn is such a I mean he he to me he just kind of transcends the team and the game. He's just one of those ambassadors of this of sport. He's one of those ambassadors of sport. And although I feel badly for Denver, for you guys as a team, I feel worse for Vaughn as an individual because I know that he was looking forward to this season. And uh, as great as his career is already, he already has a Hall of Fame career. I know that he had spent a lot of time in the off season kind of studying other greats. Uh, I know that he's a champion, he'll, he'll, he'll be back. Um, but uh, it, it was definitely a tough loss for you guys as a team and tough for the sports world to hear as well that he might not be able to play this season. Yeah, Vaughn, he really had a new focus heading into this season. I know it was gut-wrenching for all of us here in Denver when we got that news, but Lisa, you touched on it a little bit, the implications of COVID this year with the NFL. What are some other potential implications of the abbreviated training camp preseason that you think we're gonna see on Monday? Um, I think we'll probably see a, some sloppy football at first. Um, because uh, teams have not been able to, they haven't been able to train the way that they've always been able to train. You'll probably see some poor tackling. We saw that a little bit in college, college football this weekend. Um, I think younger teams um, like Denver, um, they're going to feel it more because they haven't had uh, the time spent together, like say, you know, Bill Belichick's team. Bill's been around for forever. Um, you know, teams that, but you know, these these are challenges. Like people are asking me, how can you do the sidelines without being on the sidelines? These are just challenges that we have to overcome. Um, and we just have to be grateful to go out there. I'm sure your guys are, they're grateful to be out there playing football, being able to play when four months ago, we didn't know if there was going to be NFL football. But uh, the one thing that we know is that everyone had to deal with that. Um, so the teams who've been together longer maybe don't didn't need it as much. Uh, the younger teams probably needed a little bit more, and we might see a little bit about we might see that play out a little bit. But I think everyone is just excited that football is back. Lisa, thanks so much for your time today. We really appreciate you sitting down and chatting with us. Absolutely, and good luck to the Broncos this season.